on the brink. When the people of Hobart woke on the morning of Monday the 6th of January 1975, this was the incredible sight that met them. A gaping chasm divided the Tasman Bridge, with two cars miraculously teetering on the edge. One of them, a V8 Monaro, is synonymous with the day, and viewer Glenn Dillon, who's written about the bridge's collapse for an online encyclopedia, wants to know what's happened to the car. We'll get to that later, but first the harrowing events that brought the Monaro to the brink, claimed the lives of 12 people, and cut the city in two. Hey, you going there, getting that? Oh, yes. Getting, uh, getting the dust off it? Yes, getting the dust off it. Frank and Sylvia Manley, their daughter and Sylvia's brother, were in the Monaro that night. We were coming home rather late. As we got towards the, to the bridge, we could look over and we could see that there was no lights on the bridge, but there was lights at Montague Bay and there were lights at Lindisfarne. And Frank thought there might be a smash on the bridge, so we slowed down. We didn't know we'd in danger too, too, too bloody late. What they and the other cars approaching the bridge didn't know was that a bulk carrier, the Lake Illawarra, carrying 10,000 tonnes of zinc ore concentrate, had just smashed into the bridge. Ross Gates, a journalist with the Hobart Mercury, covered the story that night. The ship uh, got out of line and it ended up very close to the eastern side of the river. At the last minute they tried to correct the steerage of the ship, but it was too late, knocked out one of the uprights and that brought down two of the spans on the bridge. The big concrete spans crashed onto the ship itself and within minutes the ship was sinking in about 30 metres of water there. I was sitting in the passenger seat, he was doing the driving, slowing down and I'm peering out like this, out through the windscreen to see what was going on. And I turned around and I said to Frank, stop, the bridge is gone. I turned around and said, I can't, I can't. I hung on to the steering wheel and hit the, hit the brakes real hard and, and that was it. They had pulled up with barely inches to spare. The car was like a seesaw that was going. I thought that it was going to go. I thought the car was going to go. When interviewed for the 7.30 report in 1994, Frank described how he got out of the car. I could, I could see, more or less, see the water. So uh, there's the black line and, showing uh, exactly where the car was. Yeah, and... Uh, See, the water, and I just swung myself towards the back of the car and grabbed the headrest like that to pull myself around. Once out, they attempted to warn the oncoming motorists of the dangers ahead. Down below, it wasn't long before various watercraft were looking for survivors. What have you found since you've been on the river tonight? Oh, one hell of a mess at the moment. We've... Uh... Actually, we've taken in about eight survivors ourselves, and there's quite a number of other boats taken in quite a few. In the aftermath, it was discovered that five crew aboard the Lake Illawarra and seven motorists in four cars lost their lives. But across the whole city, the ramifications were even broader. The full impact of the disaster, I don't think, was felt until the following morning when uh, 50,000 Eastern Shore residents woke up to find that their link with the city had been cut. So the first day was, uh, was just chaos, trying to get across to work. The whole situation bred enormous uh, uh, discontent from people, especially on the Eastern Shore, because uh, well, it took three years to repair the bridge. As for the Monaro, well, Frank and Sylvia have still got it. Although they keep it in good condition, it rarely gets a run. Sylvia doesn't like it, not because of that night 34 years ago. She just doesn't like it. And Frank prefers his other car. In fact, it's done so few kilometres, he hasn't had to change the tyres in 28 years. As
price for its future, well, they haven't made plans to part with it yet. Perhaps one day it might go to a museum or something like that. We're not sure. If someone came up with some big dollars, we'd definitely sell it. I reckon Sylvia's trying to flog us an old Monaro. Well, you can park it anywhere, apparently. One careful driver. Thank you, Jeff. Fantastic. Now it's time for this week's Ask the Air.